This project is going to have you looking at bookends differently. These are two wood corbels I picked up inexpensively from Home Depot. Now be mindful because they can get pretty expensive. I thought they would make beautiful decoupaged high end neutral bookends. We're going to be using this beautiful napkin that was sent to me from a subscriber to apply on here with the iron on method. I love this napkin because the pattern is completely over the entire piece, giving me lots of pattern to work with. We're gonna need just the top layer. So we have to remove the sneaky layers and there's several ways that you can do this. One of the easiest I find is just to tear a corner. It reveals the sneaky layers and then I just pull them apart. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to pick your medium, my friends. Here are a couple that I have on hand normally, but today we're gonna to be using Mod Podge because really it's accessible to everyone. You can even grab this stuff at Dollar Tree. Here, I wanted to show you that they do have these little brackets. You can remove them if you want, but I did not. Since we're gonna be using the iron-on method with this piece, you're gonna to wanna to take a nice healthy layer of whatever medium you choose and apply it to where you want to put your napkin. Get around those edges really well, and then you're going to allow this to dry. Now, truth be told, this is the worst part for me. I hate waiting for things to dry, and sometimes this can take two to three hours to completely dry because I put so much Mod Podge on the top of anything I'm ironing on. When that dry to dry time is up, it's time to bring in the iron. Now I use this little joint because it usually sits right next to me and where I craft and DIY at. You can use whatever iron you want. And I do turn this sucker all the way up. It's a good idea to take a minute and line up your napkin before you start ironing anything on. You're not gonna get a second chance at this, my friends. So take your time and be patient. Make sure it's in the exact spot you want because once you do this, Especially if you're doing it without parchment paper, see me noticing it right here. I can't play that because I was cussing. You're not gonna get a second chance. So make sure you bring in the parchment paper before you do any iron on method. This is going to stop your iron from burning your napkin along with Mod Podge sticking to your iron, making it difficult for you to do the iron on method as well as tearing up your napkin if it starts to melt into the Mod Podge and just ruining everything you're trying to accomplish. A good rule of thumb whenever you're doing this is to work from one side to the next and always go over the edges, making sure that they're completely sealed. When you're happy with the attachment, go ahead and remove the excess, whatever way it works best for you. I like to grab my little finger sander and go straight down not side to side. In the event that there is a section that isn't completely sealed around the edges, going straight down is going to give me a nice clean detachment of the napkin from whatever it is applied onto. If you go side to side and it's not completely attached, it is possible that it could shred that napkin making it look tattered on the edges. And if you're not going for that look, it doesn't look so great. I applied the same technique to each side of these little wood pieces. Now keep in mind, you're welcome to paint these white. Giving your items a white background will definitely make your napkins pop, but I wanted to keep these neutral. So this way it looked like the napkin was meant to be a part of the wood, as you can see the wood grain showing through in these little details. Absolutely beautiful. I grabbed these little pieces from Dollar Tree and I really feel like there is a lot you could do with them. But most importantly, I feel like we could shove some decorative napkins in here instead of a little photo 
to create some beautiful high-end home decor. But don't go tossing these pieces out just yet because we're gonna need them as our template to be able to measure our napkin and spare us some time. But beforehand, I'm gonna paint them white because we're also going to attach the napkin onto these. Feel free to use a tiny piece of poster board and just switch that out in general and save yourself the struggle of having to paint and wait for it to dry. But I figured since these were already the shape we need, why make our lives any more difficult? I'm just gonna paint them and then we'll put our napkin over them. This is hands down one of my favorite napkins to keep in my stash. Even when subscribers, thank you all so much, send me napkins and this is ever in the stash that I get. I keep some for myself before I go putting them in napkin bundles. All I did here was pick out two different designs on this napkin and cut it exactly down to size around our little template that we had here. Super simple, right? If you want, you could just use a little glue stick or tape to attach these. I did decide to iron this one down. It was a little wrinkly. So this way I didn't have to worry about it sticking up or giving me a problem as I attached it onto the little template we had measured. And to attach it, I'm just going to remove that extra little sneaky layer that we have on the back here and grab some of my Mod Podge. I'm not going for perfection, okay? I'm just going for an attachment. If you wanna use tape, if you wanna use a little glue stick, whatever, you wanna make sure, people, listen, listen to me, okay? The little plastic hole that we're gonna try and shove this napkin back into, it is not forgiving, okay? It is a tight fit. You're going to need to make sure that that napkin either goes back onto this or cut down a little piece of something to fit in there so your napkin doesn't get messed up. This way it holds its shape. I applied the same technique to a different section of the napkin, cutting down a different pattern, but this way it's the same colors, the same design, so we have a beautiful matching set. And then I just shoved these both back into the little Dollar Tree pieces, added some greenery on the sides, and I absolutely love how amazing this piece turned out. I love me some good plate wall decor. I picked this galvanized plate up some time ago from Christmas tree shops for a whole $6.99. It already has a hook on there. There is a little bit of weight to it. We are going to need to cover up this flag though. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't hate me. Don't be attacking me in the comments. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't love our country. I absolutely do. It's just a piece of decor, okay? We're gonna take some of this chalk paint and just go over the center to give it a nice base so we can take a napkin and put right over it. And people, I love this napkin. And the pattern, it's continuous throughout the whole thing. I love napkins like this. I feel like you get so much out of them. Now we're gonna also need to trim this joint down and you can do that a couple ways, but if you're a beginner, let me let you in on a little secret. Don't go removing the sneaky layer right away with something like this, okay? You wanna have room to mess this up. And I say that because we're not able to just really put a crease around this and match up with the paint that we put on the inside of here. We're gonna need to kind of eyeball this and go around gingerly. I'm using a wet paintbrush and I'm taking my finger and separating it. If you wet this and then you press along the napkin, it allows you to see underneath and then you can follow along where you have that white paint. And the reason you wanna keep the sneaky layers on is because it actually helps absorb that water, allowing you to not completely saturate just the top layer, which gets super thin once it's wet. 
it will absorb some of that extra water, stopping you from actually ruining the top decorative layer and giving you some play as you're trimming the piece completely down. If you do not want to do it like this, another option would be to place your napkin over top of the plate, just like we did here, grab a pencil and trace it gingerly around where the crease is. Cut your design out and then put it back down on the plate trace that with a pencil and then paint that in and then apply your napkin. This is just something I like to do. So as I go around, I can decide whether or not I think cutting it because sometimes if you cut the napkin down, the sharp edge will look off. So this way it allows me to kind of play with leaving that edge frayed or decide once I get it all off if I want to trim it down and smooth it out, if that would give me a better finish. Again, it's completely up to you and how you want to do this. I just feel like for me, this helps to give me options before I just stick that sucker on there and then um, <laughs> crap out of luck. For our attachment, I just used some Mod Podge with a fan brush and did little by little section by section. I did take my dry sponge. This is just a little dry sponge that I like to cut in half. I picked these up in a pack from Walmart and they help to just press down your design. And using them with a napkin, they also kind of absorb any excess Mod Podge that might seep up through your napkin help to minimize wrinkles. You can use your cling wrap or whatever method you would like to attach your napkin. This little sponge trick is just something I've been doing for years and I happen to love the way it works. You can take this next part or leave it. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna use a little bit of Dixie Belle gilding wax to go around the edges just to blend the napkin in more with the paint. And I was going to do this anyway, even if I did miss this section right here. <laughs> so it's a good learning curve anyway, in case you at home also make this mistake, you can take some silver paint or whatever color your plate is or your background is if you cut your pieces too short and just go slightly around the edges. This will help it look more blended. Just be mindful with how much you're applying so it doesn't bulk up and wet the napkin and tear anything and make sure it's completely dry. You can seal over this if you want. I did with a little bit of the same Mod Podge I used to apply our napkin. And I love how amazing this turned out. I had these little pink bottles in my stash that I grabbed around Valentine's Day from Target for just a dollar and had this adorable idea to put a pretty fancy schmancy little napkin right on the front of these. I knew I was gonna have to paint a section white, so I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint and just decided to paint over the sticker, which was a bad idea. So don't do that, okay? Instead of removing the sticker, don't paint over the sticker because once it started dry, I noticed the sticker had bubbles in it. And then when I tried to pop these bubbles, it was wet, so it just started tearing up. Sometimes it just doesn't pay to cut a corner. It ends up taking you longer. I peeled the top decorative layer off of this napkin so that way we could decoupage it onto the front of these bottles where I painted them white. This napkin was sent to me by a subscriber and I think it is so cutesy and beautiful. It reminds me, I mean, it is a doily-ish type napkin, but it reminds me of the fabric ones. You know what I mean? It's super pretty. Trim out your napkin however you want. Since this napkin was super translucent and I was able to see the outline of where I had the paint, I just put a little bit of water on a paintbrush and trimmed and then pulled it right on off. If you wanna use your scissors, you go right ahead. There's nothing wrong either way. We're just making sure that we create a shape that's gonna go over where we put the white paint on the glass. Then grab your medium of choice. I'm just using some Mod Podge and apply it right over top of the white paint. 
it's not a big deal if you go a little over and you have some on the glass you're free to go ahead and clean that up with your finger it should wipe up fairly easy just make sure you do that before you attach to your napkin because if you don't whatever excess you have over the white part you won't be able to remove it will be attached and just for anyone that is new to me in the event that you're learning decoupage and you have never been to my channel before hi i'm brandy and you might be wondering why you notice me consistently doing tiny sections it has been my experience and you decoupage how everyone everyone does things differently that going section by section and little by little like I am even on this small part it prevents bubbles it helps to just take your time and gently smooth out things instead of doing the whole section and then plopping something right on down that sucker and you can't take it back they're so thin it is really hard to fix mistakes bringing in a sponge especially if you notice there is some bubbling it is going to grab that extra mod podge that could be possibly causing you some troubles in some sections and then it allows you to flatten it out since they're pink and adorable i decided to take a cute little wood laser cut out and put in the center and i'm gonna finish this up by plopping some greenery on in here these are all done feel free to seal this up if you want i decided not to just for the reveal If you're ever looking for another spot for some inexpensive glassware, don't leave Walmart out. They have these pretty vases for $1.57 and a couple others that are inexpensive as well. I grabbed these and painted this up with some Waverly white chalk paint and Snow White. We're going to use a fan brush to create what I like to call a patch method on this beautiful vase using this stunning napkin. How pretty is this? Now, if you're skilled, right? If you're skilled, you can just take this sucker and wrap it completely around the vase. I've done this before many, many, many times, but it can be an extreme struggle to minimize wrinkles whenever you're doing that. And for a beginner, it can seem so frustrating and almost make you want to quit trying to wrap a napkin around anything that is shaped like a cylinder. So once you've removed your top decorative layer, get to sectioning out the little designs that you want like this. And do that by whatever means necessary, people. If you want to cut yours out, you go right ahead. My carpal tunnel can't handle that. So I just tear them on up into little sections. I'm going to use Mod Podge as my medium. Absolutely use whatever medium you feel is best for you. This is just what I have on hand, one of a few. And I also feel like it's easily accessible and affordable to most of you at home. Apply some thin sections and then start gently pressing down your napkin. Now, at this point, I personally like to bring in my little sponge. This is a dry sponge. I picked these up in a pack from Walmart. You most certainly can use whatever method you find will help you best to flatten out your napkin. I like to use this as well in the event that I have too much Mod Podge in certain sections. It will grab any excess. The fan brush I love for napkins because on and around the edges, it allows me to stick that sucker right up in there because the edge is so thin on the fan brush. Apply a little bit of extra Mod Podge and then go gingerly around the edges, flattening anything out that might be sticking up. I repeated this process for each one of the little patches that I ripped out. As you can see here, you can slightly see the edges of the napkin. I like to take some of the same exact paint that I applied on our background as our base and tap it, tap, tap, tap around the edges. And then I'll take my finger and pull that paint. So this way it doesn't leave a harsh edge. 
and it really just helps to make the napkin even more seamless around whatever we're applying it on and absolutely seal over this i do wait until the next day so this way the napkin has a chance to completely dry and this will also give us an advantage on creating less wrinkles allowing the first layer to dry overnight If you're ever walking in a store and you see items that have burlap over them, don't feel like you can't pick it up and remix it into something that will match your home decor. You most certainly can. I removed this clip that was holding a little photo piece on there and took some of my white Waverly chalk paint, well, Snow White is the color, and did a nice little layer right over the burlap. To be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of this piece. I think it's cute, but I don't necessarily like the colors. I felt like we could make this a little cutesy by adding a napkin onto it. This little napkin had a border at the bottom of it. Now I want to create a picture inside the burlap to where it has a border at the bottom and the top. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna completely have to trim this border off of one side of the napkin. Now, if you're lucky, you'll have a napkin in your stash that works out just great for whatever you're trying to DIY. This, however, not so much. So I did have to trim everything down. I smushed the little napkin into the frame and just kind of pressed my hands around to get an imprint so I knew exactly where to cut. And I did the same thing for the border up at the top. When I was happy with the placement, I grabbed my Fabric Mod Podge. You do want to use Fabric Mod Podge over top of burlap. I've done this many times and it really gives you an amazing look with the napkin. It makes the napkin look like it's a piece of fabric on top of the burlap. And people, keep in mind, this stuff is super thick. So you're going to definitely need to be careful with your placement of the napkin over top of this because it is super easy to tear. This particular type of DIY with napkins, my little sponge hack, this is just a dry sponge, really, really comes in handy. So that excess Mod Podge that you put on there to make sure everything gets attached nice and good to the fabric as it seeps through the porous napkins, it's getting absorbed right into that dry sponge and it's helping to minimize the wrinkles along with creating that attachment in the exact spot that you're putting your napkin. And I did this entire process for the whole thing. When I got to the tippy top of this, I then grabbed that extra little border strip that we trimmed down and placed it right over top. So this way it looks like one little designed piece that was meant to be like that. Keep in mind, if you decide that you want to put a layer of the fabric Mod Podge over top of this, it's going to turn shiny and it will be a little sticky. So in the event that that's not your cup of tea, leave it just as it is. I was recently inspired by some friends in my community to get to building a little organizer. I need something extra to keep some craft supplies. So I had these one by threes and I'm gonna cut them down for the sides to about 14 inches. For the shelf piece, I needed to take a trip to Home Depot. I went in their pre-cut section where they have some pieces already cut down and they're pretty inexpensive. If you don't wanna cut them down any further at home, they can do that there for you. I brought mine home and cut down two small shelves, used some wood glue and my nail gun and built this little gem. And guess what? This little wired basket from Dollar Tree fits perfectly right on both shelves, but we're just gonna use it for the top. And remember when I said I was inspired, this right here is what really caught my eye. If you're not hanging out with us over at the TDS community group on Facebook, you might wanna stop over there when you're done watching this. I'm just saying, there's some amazing projects going on and look, it's inspiring me inside the videos. Also, people, I wanna show y'all how long it really takes me to paint something. Look at this. What if I made y'all watch this? 
y'all would click off this video, wouldn't you? I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to y'all. I painted it off camera. We are going to take some antique Waverly wax, spray down the sides of the wood so we can spread our antique Waverly wax out way quicker with a little baby wipe and just do around the edges. Look how beautiful that turned out. I did this to both sides because honestly, this wood color is going to match our napkin perfectly. And for our medium, we're going to use some Mod Podge. And to make my life a little bit easier, well, depends on how you look at it because I got to wait for this to dry for several hours. But since it's on a shelf and there are sides kind of blocking my ability to decoupage, I think we're going to do the iron on method. Well, I know I'm going to do the iron on method. We're going to make sure we have a nice healthy layer all over the top of this thing, all the way up to the edges. And then we're going to let it dry. Several hours later, it is time to take this beautiful napkin and apply it onto the top of both of our shelves. First thing we're gonna need to do is remove the sneaky layers so we can just apply the top decorative layer. For this, I'm just gonna tear a tiny corner and it reveals the extra layers and I just pull it apart easily. Now it's time to bring in the iron and I have this sucker turned all the way up. You can use whatever iron you want for this. I just usually have this sitting around me while I craft and that's why I use that one. And don't forget your parchment paper, people. You're gonna need some parchment paper. I did decide to take some scissors and cut this down. Initially, I wasn't going to, I was like, I'll just iron it and then I will trim off the excess just by, you know, using a little sander. Then I was like, mm, it might just be best if I trim down the sides because trying to get that iron around where I have the sides might be a little bit of a pain. A little tip whenever you're doing this would be to just work from one end of your napkin to the next. I wouldn't start like right on the edge, go all around the edge, go in the middle. You could end up with bubbles. I find that if I work from one end and then work my way up. If there's excess, the napkin tends to flatten out instead of bubble over and then end up with creases if I start in the middle. When I was happy with the application, I grabbed my little finger sander and then I sanded down the edges by going straight down. Sometimes if you go side to side and you don't have a complete connection between the napkin and whatever you're ironing it on, it can tear the napkin sideways. So going straight down just ensures that if it didn't completely attach, you can fix it with some Mod Podge later without having a torn napkin. For the sides, I'm going to take some of my favorite texture paste. This is linked down in my Amazon affiliate link down in my description box. Just click that more button underneath this video. There is Amazon affiliate link down there open that. It's a little store. It is in there if anybody is interested. This stuff is amazing. I took a stencil and I just taped it down onto the sides and then used our texture paste to create a beautiful design right on the sides of these. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time, bye.